Hey, shalom everyone. This is Amir Tzalfati, live from Galilee, from Israel. Um, I'll wait a few minutes uh, for you guys to connect and uh, some interesting news. Uh, this time, not only from the Ukraine, but also from Iran and also from Syria. So, um, and Belarus as well. So, uh, <clears throat> let me uh, see that uh, we are connecting um, and uh, we can start these breaking news. Again, <clears throat> I'm going to say a few words about what's going on in Ukraine, but also something that just happened in Iran, and of course, something that is going on in Syria as well as we speak. And where Israel is, or, you know, in this whole thing. So uh, uh, let's start. Okay, so uh, again, shalom everyone. This is Amir Tzafati, and I'm back in my office in Galilee. Um, so three things that I want to talk about in these breaking news. Uh, the first thing is that uh, there was a uh, an attack on uh, the uh, in the area of. <clears throat> of Bushehr in Iran, um, close to the nuclear reactor. We're not sure exactly what's going on there. We know we've got some uh, footage of uh, heavy, heavy artillery towards um, what appears to be unmanned uh, uh, vehicle, basically, aerial vehicle. So it's a drone. So we're, we're talking about an attack of, of drones on what could be a, a nuclear facility over there in Bushehr. Again, the Iranians immediately closed the area. Immediately, they played down as if nothing happened, just like in Kremanche, uh, uh just a couple of weeks ago when we actually destroyed a whole hangar full of Iranian explosive uh, UAVs. <clears throat> However, these things are still going on as we speak. Um, something is going on in Bushehr, um, but I'll update you more on Telegram once I know. Another thing you want to know is that uh, the talks between the Ukrainians and the Russians in Belarus are not going well. <clears throat> the Ukrainians are asking the, Bel the uh, Russians to not only leave uh, Ukraine, um, but also to leave Crimea and Donetsk and Lugansk, the air territories that Russia, uh, at least in Crimea, Russia took it in 2014, and Lugansk and Donetsk is part of those territories were already um, having their own government. And so, in a way, <clears throat> it's not like Ukraine is asking the soldiers that invaded five days ago to leave. Uh, Ukraine is asking everyone who came and took any territory since 2014 must leave. <clears throat> that, of course, caused the talks to fail, and there's nothing going on right now. Right now. Uh, today, Putin took off his gloves and no more uh, attacking predominantly uh, military targets. Today, in Kharkiv, uh, horrible pictures. They sh they fired hundreds of Grad rockets um, on civilian populations, scores of dead people. Um, there's no way for them. They, they could not survive because, I mean, those rockets fell on their homes. It's not like uh, soldiers in a battlefield. I mean, their homes became the battlefield. Um, Russia is very frustrated that things are not going the pace and the way they hope. Um, their economy is is crushing, is 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 actually crashing. And their ruble fell just today thirty percent. Um, and what happened is that the Russians see that the economy is falling fast, but uh, the victory is not in the horizon. All three major cities, Odessa, Kharkiv, and Kiev, of course, are still in control of the Ukrainian military. Of course, the uh, Russians made some progress, but it's not what they planned and hoped. The Ukrainians are, are showing amazing resolve, 
and uh, resilience and um, you know it's a war where Molotov cocktails are beating uh, tanks and armored vehicles and this is exactly why Putin moved to the old tactic of bombing from the air civilian population and trying to break their spirit this way. Uh, another thing you want to know is in Syria right now, there are two different recruiting efforts. Russia is trying to recruit Syrians to come and fight in Ukraine. Russia wants to import into Ukraine some flesh and blood that will replace uh, soldiers uh, of the Russian Federation. They have a private uh, military called Wagner, and these are mercenaries that they hire. And they also have the Chechen battalions, the Muslim battalions that they just uh, drafted and uh, sent to the battlefield. So the less they send their own soldiers, the better it is. And now they're trying to recruit Syrians from Syria to go and fight for them in Ukraine. At the same time, the rebels in Syria, those that Russia expelled from the south all the way to the north to Idlib, the rebels are recruiting soldiers from Syria to fight against the Russians in Ukraine. So in a very interesting way, the, I guess, civil war in Syria is migrating to the Ukraine, where the same Syrians will continue to fight one another, this time, this one on behalf of the Ukraine and the other one on behalf of Russia. Very surreal, very, very surreal. And that is what's going on in Syria, recruiting efforts, of course. Iran continues to send shipments and weapons uh, to Syria. Uh, more uh, shipments uh, landed overnight. Israel destroyed a few days ago that uh, shipment that came to the um, area of uh, Saida, Saidna Zainab, uh, a territory that is controlled by Hezbollah, and uh, we destroyed it. But um, again, things are getting tough for Israel. And why? It's because uh, Israel is going to vote against Russia in the General Assembly. I think it will be tomorrow. In the Security Council, Israel has no seat, so we didn't have to vote for or against Russia. But when it comes to the General Assembly, every country will have to say something. And Israel decided to vote yes for condemning Russia uh, for its uh, invasion into Ukraine. So this is going to, of course, put Israel in very hot water with the Russians. You see, we have a border with the Russians now, and the Russians are north of the Israeli border. And uh, when we and want to respond to Iranian uh, entrenchments in Syria, uh, we normally coordinate that with the Russians. So it's going to be very interesting to see what's going on. Russia uh, is not only making its nuclear weapons ready, but Russia is going to transfer nuclear weapon to Belarus. But the Belarusian... Uh, um, uh, parliament just uh, in a quick uh, uh, referendum uh, approved uh, foreign entities to have a weapon on, on Belarus soil, which was basically to say to Russia that they can now put in Belarus nuclear weapon and advance it further towards Europe. And ladies and gentlemen, this is becoming a um, nuclear standoff, uh, and um, Putin is, is in a very, very tough position right now. He lost a third of his economy, I mean, $200 billion he lost in the first two days in his stock market. That equals to a third of his foreign exchange uh, uh, reservoirs that he had, the reserves that he had. He, had, he, he, he prepared for this time, reserves of $630 billion, of which, again, a sum of $200 million billion evaporated within 48 hours. So uh, Russia is in big shambles right now. 
Um, and uh, but Germany is trying very hard not to burn all the bridges because Germany depends on Russian gas, and Germany continues to do business with Russia. Believe it or not, Gazprom uh, is still selling uh, to Germany gas in Nord Stream One. See this uh, threat not to approve Nord Stream Two is it's a nice threat, but Nord Stream One has been working. For the longest time, and uh, Russia continues to sell gas, and 40% of the gas in Europe, I believe, comes from Russia. And this is going to be very hard to replace in the middle of such a very cold winter. So Russia knows that, Europe knows that, and they don't touch that part uh, with all the sanctions that they impose on the oligarchs and the, and Putin himself and his defense minister, his spokesman and others. And foreign minister, again, Russia continues to do business. And once money cannot flow anymore between Russia and the West, the West will not get oil and gas from Russia because they won't be able to pay for it. So um, I believe that uh, they left uh, some sort of uh, a way that not all the bridges will be completely burned. Um, Again, Russia is uh, now banning over 30 countries from landing in Russia or passing through Russian airspace. Now, let me make it very clear. Russia, if you look at the map of the world, is a gigantic piece of land. And with that comes a huge piece of uh, airspace. And most of the flights from Asia to America or Asia to Europe or back... They're all flying uh, via Russian airspace. And for them now, not to be able to fly there, uh, it's, it's creating a lot of, uh, a lot of um, busy airspace uh, elsewhere. So there's a lot of people in many different sectors uh, in the aviation, tourism, uh, in the technology, security, and of course in the energy sectors that they are now recalculating their steps with all that is going on right now. Again, the breaking news is that an attack is going on right now in Boucher, in, in the area of the nuclear reactor in Iran. Um, we know that well, I have videos of several um, uh, UAVs that are being uh, fired at by the uh, by the artillery and the anti uh, or the air defense system of that area, very interesting. That is going on and happening two weeks after is uh, supposedly allegedly the Mossad through uh, with with UAVs that it used destroyed in the area of Kermansha, uh, destroyed a whole hangar where Iran was keeping it its own suicide drones over there. Um, again, as I said, <clears throat> the talks in Belarus between Ukraine and Russia collapsed. The Ukrainian demand is that all Russian soldiers will leave not only Ukraine mainland, but also Crimea and Donetsk and Lugansk. Of course, this is uh, you don't expect that to, to happen. The Russians, of course, refused. It's probably not going anywhere. In fact, Today, Putin took off his gloves. I guess he's super angry that things are not going the way he wanted. And today, he went back to his old ways of what he does in other places, such as Syria. And he's uh, today attacking civilians like, like never before in this short war. Uh, in Kharkiv, I have footage that you can see on my Telegram channel where... Uh, Hundreds of Grad missiles landed on civilian population. I'm trying not to show graphic images there, but uh, dozens of casualties. I'm talking about uh, at least 100 casualties just from that particular incident alone. You see, they just launch. I mean, it is, it is uh, crazy uh, how they just launch rockets, I mean, literally everywhere. Their civilian houses. 
Um, the Russians are now telling this population of Kiev that there is a safe passage for Kiev residents who wants to flee. There's a safe passage for them that the Russians are secured and they can leave the city. Of course, the Russians want as many civilians to leave because then whoever is left is the ones they want to kill because these are the resistance movement. Um, they want to clean the city, put a puppet uh, government that will no longer uh, dance to the music of NATO and the West. And this is something that uh, it is. it was made pretty obvious by Putin's uh, uh, actions as of late. So, folks, uh, again, uh, breaking news, UAV attack in, uh, in um, Bushehr, at, at recruiting efforts in Syria for both sides. Um, Belarus is going to become nuclear uh, with nuclear weapon that Russia will deploy there, which will be closer to you, Europe. And, uh, of course, uh, we heard that the talks collapsed. And in fact, the war has intensified. The Russians are now attacking civilian population as a target. Uh, if it was a collateral damage earlier and the main target was just military installations, now it's no longer the case, at least not of the last few hours. Kharkiv, Kiev and Odessa are still in Ukrainian hands. And that was not the plan. The Russians planned on having those three major cities of Ukraine falling within 48 hours. It's been almost five days now, and they're still standing, and they're still in a, without uh, Russian full control. The Russians made great progress in the Sea of Azov, and in that territory, all the coast of Ukraine is now taken by Russia. The city of Mariupol uh, is now being surrounded from all sides, and this is the last stronghold along the coast of the Sea of Azov, <clears throat> which is in the lowest point of Donetsk. And so there's so much that is going on right now. I'm reporting non-stop on my Telegram channel. Please subscribe, download Telegram Messenger, find Amir Tsarfati. I've got about 242,000 uh, subscribers. Uh, it's easy to find me. Um, and uh, join the channel and you'll get non-stop, um, uh, of course, reports on things that are going on. Again, there's so much that is going on. I cannot go live all the time. So I try to cram as much as I can right now for the events of the last few hours. But again, the breaking news was that not only Ukraine has some interesting things going on, you know, terrible things, not interesting but um, even in Iran right now, there was an attack, a UAV attack on the area of the nuclear reactor in uh, Bushehr. Um, again, the Iranians will not tell you what happened. We will probably find out in a few days. Uh, but what we do know is that heavy, heavy gunfire towards the sky to hit those UAVs was not only uh, heard, but also videotaped. So... Uh, I'm going to post it in a few minutes. Again, uh, the talks failed in Belarus. Belarus is actually attacking Ukraine uh, with uh, Iskandar uh, short-range ballistic missiles. So <laughs> they're hosting these talks, but they're one of the countries that is attacking uh, uh, Ukraine right now. And the Belarusian uh, parliament approved uh, the possibility that Russia will actually um, uh, put a nuclear weapon on Belarus soil. And so the situation is escalating. Most of Europe and, of course, America closed their airspace for uh, Russian planes. Russia is now closing its airspace for over 30 different countries. And I'm not sure if you understand what it means. It means that a huge chunk of 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 planet Earth will have almost no planes flying above it. And that means that all the, all the planes will have to fly in a different route. And that makes the, the, the rest of the routes pretty busy. And lots of flights will be canceled, that's for sure. And that will affect traffic for tourists, traffic for business, 
traffic for freight, uh, and, and, and more. So the effect of this war will be felt in so many different levels. Um, again, the ruble is just collapsing. A 30% drop today in the uh, Russia actually uh, closed its stock market, uh, suspended all trade, but in the early trade, it, before it was open, it already dropped 30%. And if the Russians will open their stock market, it will continue to, to drop because uh, business has come to a standstill in Russia while the rest of the world is doing business with one another. Um, this is it for now. Please share this uh, breaking news with as many people as you can. Much of what you heard here is stuff that you will not find anywhere else. Please follow me on um, Telegram, and uh, I promise uh, to give you more information. Again, a lot of people are asking me, uh, are we in the tribulation? What is going on? Uh, is the war uh, of Ezekiel? All of this, uh, you know, I just want to tell you that um, if you want to understand all that uh, is in the book of Revelation, uh, I just came up with this, the new book, Revealing Revelation. You can uh, pre-order it on Amazon right now. And, um, and this will just be the easiest way to understand the entire book and to finally not fall into the trap of those who try to confuse you with uh, taking things out of context and frightening you that as if you you are in that tribulation okay good thank you god bless you and i'll update you more on telegram and uh so we'll stay in touch thank you god bless you bye, -bye.